Welcome to Fantastic Foreign News. Today's topic, the Arctic Tundra. We're your hosts. Laura Campbell. Ashlyn Briggs. Alex Fitznoa. And Thea Reynolds. Where exactly is the tundra? Alex, could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. The tundra covers the Arctic and the Antarctic. The Arctic is at 66 degrees north at 33 feet and 38 inches, while the Antarctic is at 66 degrees south at 33 feet and 38 inches. And the altitude is between 300 and 11,000 feet. The longitude in the tundra varies. It's home to dark and deep lakes, polygons, hills, and the melted snow lakes on soil due to permafrost. It's also prone to earthquakes. Wait, what's permafrost? And what are polygons? Permafrost is basically a layer under the soil that's permanently frozen, which causes lakes and marshes to often be shallow. Tundra polygons are pieces of ground shaped like polygons, and they're formed due to three, the three fall cycle that occurs in permafrost areas. That's so cool. What do these mean for the climate of this biome? I can answer that. The average yearly temperature ranges from negative 34 degrees Celsius to negative 6 degrees Celsius. So I guess you could say the temperatures are unbearable. Oh brother, the tundra gets an average of 10 inches of snow and rain per year. There are two main seasons, winter and summer. During the winter, it's very cold and dark. The average temperature in winter is around negative 28 degrees Celsius, sometimes dipping as low as negative 50 degrees Celsius. Fun fact, in winter, the tundra gets 24 hours of darkness and during summer gets 24 hours of sunlight. Alex mentioned earthquakes. Are there any other natural disasters? Sadly, yes. The tundra experiences wildfires and drought, and as the climate changes, infect Insect infestations may also increase, and as it gets warmer, shrubs and replace lynches and other vegetation. We'll learn more about climate change and specifically how humans are impacting this biome later. But you might be asking, what lives in the tundra? Let's go to Loudon with the biotic factors. As we take a live look into the tundra, we see polar bears inhabiting the sea ice of the Arctic Ocean. The population is between 22,000 and 31,000. And a fun fact for you, they spend over 50% of their time hunting and their keystone species. What animals do they spend all that time hunting for? Good question. Polar bears prey on ringed and bearded seals. As we see in our diorama, D'Angelo Frederick, the polar bear, is working on Carlos the seal, a classic predator-prey relationship that occurs in the tundra. This brings us to the other side of the symbiotic relationship, the seal. Where do the seals live? Seals are found in the coast in cold waters. They eat any fish they can get their flippers on, and they survive in the harsh climate thanks to their thick blubber. Another animal that inhabits the tundra are snow geese. They're similar to seals, but instead of blubber, they have their feathers to keep them warm. These geese are herbivores, and they feed on berries, seeds, and shrubs. Any cool facts about the plants in the tundra? The willow trees in the tundra have the ability to grow under a layer of snow, and they can perform photosynthesis in the cold conditions. That's so cool. Yeah, and the cotton grass has adapted to have dense bristles, which can withstand the heavy winds. Hey, after all that talk about the plants and animals, I'm curious to learn about the humans in the tundra. Hey, I can tell you about that. Let's kick it off with the population. Around 400,000 indigenous people have been documented living throughout the Arctic tundra. Whoa, how do they survive in those conditions? They still practice old survival skills of hunting and taking the fur of the animals, especially polar bears. This is a huge, this is a huge problem since it can contribute to overhunting and has led the polar bears to be at a high risk of extinction. That's not cool at all. Are there any other ways that humans are affecting the bio? Well, the tundra offers many natural resources, like oil and copper, but that's another story. When the oil drilling occurs, oil spills can occur and affect the waters on such a level that it's deadly to the animals. Why are they doing this? How does it benefit them? Almost all of us use oil and gas for transportation, heating, etc., but it doesn't stop there. The mining industry is huge in the tundra due to the abundance of copper, gold, and coal. The World Wildlife Foundation states that if the proposed pebble mine is permitted and constructed, it would permanently de destroy miles of salmon habitat and create up to 10 billion tons of toxic waste. How does this contribute to climate change? The release of greenhouse gases is causing temperatures to rise at twice the rate of the rest of the world. This leads to lower levels of sea ice, melting permafrost, and rising sea levels. The lower sea ice can have serious implications for the animals that depend on ice for survival. Is there anything being done to help? Yes, the WWF is doing a lot to help. They're focused on sustainable fishing and hunting, economic growth, and industry development. They have a work stream dedicated to reducing climate change. They implemented an assessment of the Arctic Council, a forum on Arctic conservation and sustainable development. This is called the WWF Arctic Council Conservation Scorecard. This is to ensure the council is more effective and transparent. Is there anything we can do? Yes, a huge way to help is to support the WWF in their conservation efforts and to spread the word. 
To find specific ways you would like to help, go to www.f.org and go to the How to Help tab to learn how you can help from signing a petition, participating in athletic events, or even having a career inside the WWF. There's always something you can do. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to help. Well, there you have it, kids. The Arctic Tundra. And as, and as always, always, thanks, thanks for, for tuning in to the Fantastic Four. News for you.